Hi friends, this is Bakapa. In this chapter 4 of Playwright full course, we are going to see what is environment file and how to create environment file and also we will see how to access the environment file configurations in the Playwright test. And next we are going to see what is data driven testing and how to do a data driven testing using JSON file and also we will see how to perform the data driven testing using CSV file in Playwright. And next we are going to see how to run the Playwright test on the multiple environments such as QA environment, stage environment, prod environment like this. And next we are going to see what is page object model and why page object model is required. And also we are going to see how to implement the page object model in Playwright. And next we are going to see how to do video recording of the automation test execution in Playwright. And finally, we are going to see how to make the full screen browser using Playwright. In this Playwright tutorial, we are going to see how to create environment file and how to add the configurations into the environment file. And also we are going to see how to use the configuration data in the Playwright test. So before we get started with the spec file creation, so you need to install one package called .env. So simply you can open the command prompt and you, and you can enter the npm space install space .env and space hyphen hyphen save. So once you execute this particular command, this will install save the .env package into your Playwright automation framework. So once the installation is done, so you can see here one package is looking for funding so it is already added the one package maybe if somebody is interested they can give the funding to work on this particular package so if you see here guys already one package is added and once the once the installation is completed like this you can go to the vs code and open the package.json file and if you see here in the line number 14 dependencies part so there is a one package got added right so whatever the installation we have done so that package is added over here so once the installation is completed you will be seeing the this particular package name and respective version over here in this dependencies that's it guys so this is how you can install the env into the playwright automation framework now let's quickly create a one spec file so here i'm creating a one spec file called read env file dot spec dot js so that's it so here i will go to the one of the test and simply i will take the copy of this test and i'll paste it here and here i will delete the all the stuffs which are not required for us and then i will update the test name as read env file in playwright so that's it guys now let's look at the manual scenario and we will automate that particular scenario then we will create the dot env file and we will add all the configuration in that env file then we will see how to read the env file in playwright so let's discuss the manual scenario first so firstly i will open the google.com once we enter this url we will inspect the search text box here and we will enter something here and then we will press the enter from the keyboard that's it guys so simply i will take the url and i will go to the vs code so here i'm using the await followed by page dot go to and simply i'm adding the url here so once we open the browser so it will navigate to the this particular url now we have to inspect the search keyword so here I'll say search with keywords. So let's inspect the search text box here. So there are multiple attributes and values over here. So I'm using the ID value. I'll take the ID and here I'll press hash and the value. So I have written a simple CSS selector by using the ID I'm identifying the element so we have identified the search text box 
and here I'm using the await keyword followed by page object dot. So here I'll say locator and inside the locator I will add the CSS selector value. Then firstly I will click on that particular text box. Then I will use the same locator and then I will enter the data into the text box by using the fill function. So here I'll say play write by testers talk. That's it. So once we enter the search keywords, so we will press the let's enter the playwright by tester stock. So once we got the results here, right? So we to get the results here, we have to click on this search icon or we have to press the enter from the keyboard. So we will press the enter from the keyboard. So I will use the same locator and after that so simply I'm calling the one function called press and inside this I'm passing the value as enter. That's it guys. So let's wait for some time once we perform all the actions. So here I'm saying wait for timeout. So you can give any number of milliseconds here. That's it guys. So let's verify this test is working fine or not then we will quickly create the .env file inside the playwright automation framework and then we will see how to read the env file. And if you see here guys so we are able to search with playwright by tester stock in the google search page right and our test is working fine right that's it guys now what i will do is inside this our project i am going to create a one file called dot env that's it guys so i have opened the file so here i'm adding the configurations you can add any configuration say for example i'm adding the first configuration as environment so here you can add the respective value and let's add the url here and we can add the respective value we can add other fields also username so i will enter something some data over here and i will enter the key as password so we can pass the some password value here and so let's pass the url here so in our case if you read if you see the our spec file so we have the url right so we will read this particular url from the environment file so simply i will cut this particular url and i'll paste it inside the env file that's it guys so right now as of now we are reading only this url and also we'll try to read the username and password but we are not using these values anywhere in the web application but i will show you how to read the other fields data as well just by using the key that's it guys so i will go back to the spec file and here we have to enter the url right so you can simply use the process dot env dot so simply you need to enter the key name here so that it pulls the respective data from the dot env file so in our case i want to read this url so that's the reason simply i will pass the url as the key here that's it guys so we are done with reading the data from the dot env file from the playwright so once you save the both the files now let's try to run the test and later we will read the username value and password value from the dot env file see guys we are getting some error so it is saying that page expected string but got undefined so we are getting this particular error so we are missing one thing so what you need to do is so simply you need to go to the playwright.config file right so here so you need to enable one line of code here in this configuration file so that is the line number eight so make sure that if this line is not there simply you can add the require inside the require specify the dot env and then dot configurations so by default this line will be com commented in your configuration file and if it is not there make sure that you are adding this line 
and once you have added this particular line so this time we should be able to read the configuration data in the playwright test and if you see here guys so test launched the browser and it has entered the url as a google.com so previous previously it was not able to get the url because we have not enabled to read the data from the env configuration file and if you see here guys our test is perfectly working fine right so there are no issues at all now let's try to read the so here i'll say username and password so let's read the this username and password from the configuration file so here i'm writing simply console dot log so here i'll say username is then simply i will use the process dot and here i will specify the username user underscore name so this is the key what we have used in the configuration file so let's read the password as well in the similar way so while you are working in the real time projects so you can always specify the all these configurations in the dot env file so simply i'll pass the here password as the key so that's it guys now let's run this test so we should be able to pull the url username and password from the configuration file using playwright so our test is working perfectly fine so let's look at the output as well and if you see here guys so we are able to read the username and as well as password so this is how you can create the configurations in the playwright automation framework and this is how you can read it in the playwright automation test in the previous playwright tutorial you have seen how to read the env file that means the configurations from the env file and how to pass on to the playwright test you have seen it in this playwright tutorial we are going to discuss about how to perform data driven testing using json file in playwright so here i will navigate to the vs code and i will create the one spec file as data driven testing json dot spec dot js so that's it so here i will go to the read env file spec file and simply i will copy the test here and i'll paste it here so that's it guys and here i will rename the test name as data driven testing using json file in playwright so that's it guys so let me explain what we are doing in this playwright test so in the line number seven so we are navigating to the url so we are reading the url from the configuration file so we are reading it from the dot env file so we are reading the google.com so after entering the google.com then we are identifying the search text box then we are entering the text as playwright by tester stock then we are clicking the sorry we are pressing the enter from the keyboard that's it guys so we are not doing much here so use case is very simple so we are going to the google.com and we are searching with the some keywords now if you see here in the line number 11 so we are passing the some test data right so we will see how to pass this particular test data from the json file so before we go ahead and create the test data file so let's run this test and we'll make sure that this test is perfectly working fine so that's it guys 
So if you see here, output, our test is getting passed. So this is the expected behavior. And so let's start creating the test data now. So already I have created a folder. So let me delete this particular folder. So let's start creating it from the beginning. Just now I have tried it. So I will create the one folder called test hyphen data. And inside this folder, I'm creating the another folder called QA. And uh, based on the environment, we can create the multiple folders here. And inside the QA, I'm creating a one JSON file called google.json. So here I'm giving the file name as Google because we are keeping the Google search keywords inside the JSON file. So that's it guys. I have opened the JSON file now. So simply I will create the one JSON object here. So here I'll say the object name as module one test data. That's it guys. So simply I will open and close the flower brackets. So here we have to add the keys and respective values guys. That's it. So here I'm adding the three keys and three values. That's it guys. So here I'm giving the key name as skill one. And here I'm adding the value as I will go to the data driven testing JSON spec file. So I'm passing the very first search keyword as playwright by tester stock. So this is the very first search keyword. So then, so this is the very first key and value and second key is skill two. So here I'm adding the value as Cypress by tester stock and I'm adding the skill three as JavaScript by tester stock. So that's it guys. So I don't want to create more data. So I think three sets of test data is enough for me. So we will see how to pass all these test data to the playwright test. So we have the test data file is ready now. So let's go to the spec file. And here what I will do is, so I need to use this particular test data. So that's the reason we have to import the this particular file in the data driven testing JSON spec file. So that's the reason here I will say import and followed by that I'm storing into the one object. So that's the reason simply I will give the object name as same name whatever we have in the JSON test data file. That's it. And now what I will do is simply I will write the keyword as from and here we have to pass the location of the test data file where we have where actually we have created the google.json file. So we have to specify the path of the test data file. So here I'm writing two dots. That means it will focus on the our current project directory. And here I will write the slash and inside this current folder. So we have to navigate to the test data then QA folder. So here I'm selecting the test data slash QA and slash. So if you have created multiple test data files, so you need to select the respective test data file. That's it guys. Now we have imported the our test data file in the current spec file now. So simply you need to take this object model one test data. Say for example, I want to pass the test data from JSON file to the this particular line. In this line, I want to pass the test data from the JSON file. So simply I will remove this and I will add the model one test data dot. So if you see here guys, it's already suggesting all the keys which are there inside the test data file, right? So let's pass the skill one now. That's it guys. Now if I run the test, so firstly we, we should be able to search with playwright by tester stock. And if you see here guys, so it has picked the data from the JSON file. That is a skill one value. And if you see the test, so our test is getting passed. Now this time, let's pass the skill three. So now we should be able to search with JavaScript by tester stock. So here I'll simply pass the skill three. 
and if we run the test so we should be able to search in the google search page as javascript by testers talk and if you see here guys so we are able to pass the respect to test data from the json file so this is how you can read the test data from the json file and this is how you can pass on to the playwright test so far you have seen how to read the test data from json file and how to pass on to the playwright test now let's see how to perform the actual data driven testing in the sense how to pass the multiple sets of test data to the this particular test right so here what i am doing is simply i am writing the one for off loop so here we'll say for off by using the for off loop i will get all the sets of test data from the this particular json file and we'll pass one at a time so i will go to the spec file here so what i'm doing is so simply here i'm just using the object dot entries so inside the entries so i will pass the our json object so that's it guys so whenever we received received a data from the json file so that will be in the format of key and value so that's the reason so here i will save that into the key and value format so that's it so once we are having the test data in the form of key and value so simply i will take this particular test and i'll keep it inside the for loop so that's it guys so we are done with creating the for loop so we are able to get the test data that means the json object values in the form of keys and values so here i'm interested in only the value so let's say for example first time our test is running so we are going to pass the playwright by tester stock so whenever the second time our test is running so we'll pass the cypress by tester stock and so on if you are having a multiple sets of test data like this so that's it guys it's very simple now so simply i will add the single quotes here and within the single quotes i'm adding the dollar symbol and followed by open and close floor brackets so i'm interested in only the values so i want to read only this these values one by one and i want to pass on to the my playwright test so that's the reason so here i will take the only value from the json object and i will use this particular value inside the our test where we are actually passing the test data in the line number 14 that's it guys so we are done with the implementation of how to pass the multiple sets of test data to the any single automation test so if i run the test so this test will get executed three times because we have the three sets of test data so if i run the test so it will start passing the very first test data called play right by tester stock So it has passed to the playwright by tester stock. And then second time it is passing the Cypress by tester stock. And third time, so it is going to pass the JavaScript by tester stock. So this is how you can implement the data driven testing using JSON file in Playwright. And if you see here, guys, so three test cases are got passed, right? So this is how you can implement the data driven testing using json file in playwright in the previous playwright tutorial we have discussed how to perform data driven testing using json file in this playwright tutorial we are going to discuss about how to perform data driven testing using csv file in playwright so let's navigate to the so vs code so here i'm creating one quickly spec file so before we create a spec file so you need to install one plugin called csv parse so simply you can go to the terminal or command prompt and you need to install the one plugin called npm install csv parse and once this installation is completed so you can cross verify whether csv hyphen parse plugin is installed in your automation framework or not so simply you can go to the package.json file and insert the dependencies section so you should be able to find the the plugin which you have installed with respect to the even you need to see the which version of the 
csv parse plugin you are using it so make sure that this plugin is present over here that's it guys so this is about installation of csv hyphen parse so let's create the spec file now so here i'm giving the spec file name as data driven testing csv dot spec dot js so that's it guys so i will go to the data driven testing json dot spec file so simply i will copy the this particular test and i'll paste it here and here i will modify the test name as data driven testing using csv file in playwright so that's it guys so let me explain what we are doing in this playwright test so in the line number 10 we are navigating to the google.com and then in the line number 13 and 14 we are clicking on the google search text box and after that we are entering the value in the line number 14 then we are pressing the enter from the keyboard and after that we are waiting for some time and then so we are closing the test execution that's it guys and this particular test is surrounded with the for loop so that means so in the previous tutorial we have seen how to perform the data driven testing using json file so we are getting the json file and we are simply passing on to the our playwright test so that's it guys now to perform the data driven testing using csv file so firstly we have to create the test data file so that means we have to create the csv test data file then we will come back to this spec file and we will delete all the stuffs which are which are related to the json file so here i will go to the qa folder and here we are going to create the test data file first so here i'm saying new and followed by text document so i will open this document and i will maximize this so all the values you need to write it within the double quotes so here i'm adding three columns and followed by two sets of test data the very first column name is test case id that's it and the second column name i'm adding it as skill one and i'm adding the third column name as skill two now we have added the columns that means the headers now we have to add the data so every value is separated by the comma so in csv file that's what we do it now so right now i'm adding the respective data so that's it guys so i am adding the three column data here first i will add the test case id and then i then i will add the skill one then i will add the skill two so here i'm adding test case id as tc underscore zero one so this is the second test case tc underscore zero two and here i'm adding the now skill one so skill one i'm adding it as playwright by tester stock in the similar way i will add the skill two for the test case one so here i'll say cypress by tester stock and then i will come to the test case 2 that is tc underscore 0 2 and here i will add the skill 1 as postman by tester stock and i will add the skill 2 as rest assured by tester stock so that's it guys so if you want you can add multiple sets of test data with respect to the test cases as of now i have created only two test cases with respect to that I'm adding the skill one data and the skill two data and here i will go to the file and here i'll choose the option as save as so here i'll select the all files and here i will provide the file name so here i'll say test data dot csv that's it guys and i'll save it so we are done with creating the csv file if you see here guys so our test file name is test data dot csv so we are done with creating the test data now i will go back to the vs code now so here we have to import three things one is so here i'm saying import fs from so you need to you need to import the file system 
from the fs that's it and the second thing you need to import the path from the path and the third import statement you need to write that is the parse and you need to get it from the here you can say from and followed by that you can say csv hyphen parse and slash you need to write the sync that's it guys so you need to use these three import statements so once you are done with adding all these import statements now let's write a statement which will fetch the test data from the csv file so here, I, here i'm writing the one constant variable as records and equal to here i'm saying parse for for this function so we are passing total two parameters one is the directory name file location that is the one part and the second part is so which column you need to take it and how you can skip the empty lines as well so those parameters we are passing on to the parse function so here firstly i'm saying fs dot so i am using the file system dot read file sync and for this function again we have to pass the two parameters one is the directory and another one is the exact file location of the csv file so here i'm saying path dot join so inside this one we have to actually pass the directory followed by the file location where exactly we have the csv test data file so here i'm directly saying dot two dots followed by test data and followed by that we are having the qa folder let's add the qa folder slash and we have the file name as test data dot csv so let's add the file name as test data dot csv so that's it guys now we are done with adding one parameter now so again now so here we have to pass the another object within this object so i'm passing two values so i'm saying to this playwright so consider the columns so here i'm adding the columns as true i'm setting the flag as true so read the columns and then also i'm saying skip the empty lines so i don't want to read the empty lines so here i'm passing the value as true so that's it guys now simply i will put the semicolon at the end of the statement and let me summarize what we have done so far so firstly we have installed the plugin called csv hyphen parse and then we have created the data driven testing csv.spec file and we have copied one test so that test case is what it does is so simply it navigates to the google.com and it searches with the keyword basically right and after that we have created the test data file and after that so we have imported all these three statements and after that we have written the one simple statements by using that we are going to read the our test data file and once we are able to read the test data file so rest of the things are very easy guys so simply we have to write the one for, for off loop and inside that we have to use the our records variable so simply i will delete this stuff and i'll add it as a records and here i'll say the variable name as record so now i will delete the things which are related to the json file so that's it guys now so this record right so this record variable who is holding the each time whenever our test whenever our for loop executes right so it picks the one row of test data that means one test case da test data it will picks and it will pass on to the our test so right now we are having only two sets of test data so our test will get executed two times so that's the reason so simply i'll take this record and i'll pass on to the our test method description and here i will say record dot test case name test case id so this particular column name we have provided it in the test data file if you remember it so this is the very first column name what we have in the csv file so that's it guys now so i will take the record 
and here I want to search with the skill one. So here I'll say skill one. That's it, guys. So we are done with implementing the for for loop statement as well. Simply we are reading these records, which contains the all the test data from the CSV file, and we are passing on to the test title. And once we have that data in the test title, simply we are using that data in the in our test steps. So let me go to the test data file, guys, once again. So let me edit with the Notepad++. So here I have passed the skill one, right? So firstly, it will search us with the, in the Google search text box, it will enter the Playwright by Tester stock. That is a very first test. And second time, it will start searching the Playwright by Tester stock. So if I pass skill two, first time it will start searching with Cypress by Tester stock. And the second time it will start searching with Rest Assured by Tester stock. So that's it guys. Now I will come back to the VS Code. Now our test is ready guys. Now let's run the test. So first it should start searching with the Playwright by Tester stock. So if you see here guys, so we are able to search the, the proper key, proper data. And second time we should be able to search with Postman by Tester stock. And that's it guys. If you see here guys, our two tests are working perfectly fine. So if I pass skill to here. So basically, whenever it enters in this test, right? So it fetches the one row of test data every time. So you can use any data in that particular row. And you can use it in, in your automation test. So this time I'm passing the skill to. So let's execute the test. Firstly, it will start searching with Cypress by tester stock and then it will search us with the rest assured by tester stock. So this is the very first time our test is getting executed and this is the second time test execution is triggered. And if you see here guys, our test is perfectly working fine and also you can see the results over here. Our two tests are perfectly working fine. So this is how we can perform the data driven testing using CSV file in Playwright. In the previous Playwright tutorial, we have discussed how to perform data-driven testing using CSV file in Playwright. In this Playwright tutorial, we are going to see how to run a test on multiple environments by using the different sets of test data from the different environments such as QA environment, stage environment, prod environment. So let's see one by one. So what are the steps you need to follow to achieve the test execution on different environments? So firstly, here I will create the one spec file inside the tests folder. So here I'm giving the spec file name as read data based on environment.spec.js. So that's it guys. So here I will go to the one of the file called data driven testing json.spec file so simply i will copy the test and i'll paste it here so that's it guys so here i don't want it i don't want the for loop so i will delete the for loop and let me update the test name as so here i'll put the single quotation And here I'm updating the test name as read test data based on different environment in Playwright. So that's it guys. So let me try to run this particular test. So let me format the test properly. So that's it guys. So we have the test ready. So let's run the test and we will verify whether this test is working fine or not. So before we run this test, let me summarize what exactly this test is doing. So firstly, we are navigating to the google.com and in the Google search page, we are searching with the some keywords. So let me pass the exact keyword. So previously we were reading the test data from the JSON file. So here I'll write playwright by 
tester stock that's it guys so if i run this test so our test should work fine then we will quickly create the different environment test data file and we'll start reading that data in the playwright test so that's it guys so we are able to search the keywords properly in the google and if you look at this one output so our test is getting passed that's it guys now so if you look at the test hyphen data folder so inside this we have only one environment right now so the environment name is qa right now so let's try to create the another environment so inside the test hyphen data so here i'm creating the another environment called stage so inside the stage folder i'm creating the one json file as google.json so that's it guys now i will open the google.json file which is there inside the qa folder so simply i will copy the this particular test data and i'll paste it inside the stage google.json file so that's it guys so right now we have the test data and with respect to the based on the environment so let's create the another json object inside the test data file so i'm adding another object here guys so simply i will take the copy of this so just i will give the different object name so right now we are updating the json file which is there inside the qa folder so here i'll say qa test data and that's it guys so i don't want to update the search keywords here and in the similar way i'm opening the stage json file and i'm adding the another data file here and here i will update the object json object name as stage test data but in case of stage test data we are going to update the search keywords so firstly i will write api testing by tester stock and here i'll say spec flow by tester stock and then here i'll say easy repro by tester stock so search keywords are different in the different environments right now so that's all about the creation of the test data file guys so now so let's read these two test data file inside the spec file now so already we are reading the qa test data json file so here we have to just specify the object name so let's add the object name here so i will copy this json object here and i'll paste it here so that's it guys in the similar way so i'm trying to read the test data file that's a json data file which is there inside the stage as well and here i need to update the json object name so i will open the stage json file and simply i will copy the json object name and i'll paste it here and here we have to update the path as well so i'm now updating the path as stage so that's it guys so this is the location where we have the test data for the qa environment so this is where we have the test data for the stage environment right so once we are done with reading the test data from the different location so here i'm using the one concept called test dot describe so this particular describe function is used to create the group of test cases to align on the test data say for example we have the one test data so it can be the qa test data or stage test data so that variable we should be able to use across the all the tests which are written inside this particular spec file so that's the reason i am using this test dot describe grouping approach to align on the test data so here we can provide the any module name or anything so here i'll say module one test then i will put comma then i'll write the arrow function then i will close and open the floor brackets and inside this so i am going to write the one hook called before before all so that's where we are deciding from which environment data we need to read it so here i am using test dot before all 
So here we can provide the name as running before all test and that's it. Then we can put the arrow function. We can, then we can open and close the flower brackets inside the before all function. So here I'm writing very simple if condition guys. So if, so basically I'm reading the configuration data from the env file. If you look at this particular configuration data, so here we are adding whether we want to run our playwright test on the QA environment or the stage environment. So I want to read this particular configuration. So that's the reason here I'm using process dot env dot env. And if it is equal to the QA, then I'm creating a one global variable called let So here I'm saying the variable name as test data equal to null. So initially the test data variable will be assigned with a null value. And after that, so we will use this particular null, sorry, test data variable. So if it is the environment value is QA, then simply assign the QA test object, test data object to the test data. That's it guys. And here I'll write the another else statement and here I will assign the stage test data to the test data variable. So based on the environment, you can write the multiple if find else statement guys. So based on the configuration, based on the environment configuration, so we are going to read the respective test data from the different JSON files. That's it guys. We are done with writing the main configuration code. Now, so we have the test, right? So let me copy this test. So I'll cut it and I'll paste it inside the test dot describe all. So let me format it properly. And that's it guys. So if you look at here, so what we have done. So firstly, we are reading the test data from the different environments. And here based on the configurations from the dot env file. So we are deciding which test data file we need to read it. So right now, so we are done with writing the all the test data to the respective variables here. Now we have to use this particular test data variable by using this one, we can access the respective values. So in the line number 26, we want to read the test data from the different JSON files based on the environment. So simply I will use the test data dot so here we have to specify the key name. Say for example, I want to read the skill one data. So I want to read the playwright from the QA environment if configuration is QA, right? So that's the reason I need to specify. I need to specify the this particular key over here after the test data. That's it guys. So let's say now the, our configuration is QA. So it is going to read the QA json file so it is going to pass the playwright by testers talk so this is what it is going to search in the google search page so that's it guys so i have saved the test now let's try to run it so if you see here guys so google.com has opened and now we are searching with playwright by testers talk right and if you see here so our test is perfectly working fine. Let's say if I put two here. Now this time it is going to search with Cypress by tester stock. So let me run the test once again. So still we haven't updated the configuration. Right now our tests are running using the QA environment test data. So this time what I will do is I will update the configuration as stage. So here I will go to the dot env file so here i will pass the value as stage so that's it so let me go to the stage test data file so if you see here guys the skill 2 is spec flow right in this case so now we should be able to search with spec flow by tester stock in the ui test 
so that's it guys we have done the configuration change now our configurations are pointing to the stage environment so let's run the test we should be able to search with spec flow by tester stock and if you see here guys so we are able to search the data with the proper keywords so if i pass the one here skill one and we should be able to search with the api testing by tester stock so this is the stage test data so let me run the test once again so if you see here, see here guys so we are able to search with api testing by tester stock and our test is perfectly working fine so this is how you can configure the data for the multiple environments such as qa environment stage environment dev environment or it can be the prod environment also and this is how you can read the test data from the different environments and pass on to the playwright test in the previous playwright tutorial we have discussed how to read the test data from the different environments and how to pass on to the playwright test so in this tutorial we are going to discuss about how to implement page object model in playwright so let's understand why page object model is required and what is page object model and what are the advantages of using the page object model and what are the disadvantages of using the page object model and also we will see playwright sample page object page and also we are going to see the sample page object test as well and after that we'll, we will start implementing the page object model in the playwright framework so let's see why page object model is required so if you look at this particular diagram guys and in the line number 19 we have added one locator so here i have highlighted all the locator wherever we have used a locator so right now we have hard coded all the locator values right so this might be used in 100 test tests right say for example suddenly developer changes changes to the dom details so i need to run through all the 100 automation tests and i need to update all these locators right so that will be a very tedious task for me so that's the reason so it is very important for us to implement the page object model in playwright automation framework so let's understand what is page object model first so page object model is a design pattern to create the object repository for the web page elements and every web page will be containing the corresponding page class say for example if i take an example of google page so firstly we have the home page so we will be creating a one class called home page and if i search something in the google search page so we will get the result page so we will be creating a separate class called result page so like that for every web page there will be a corresponding page class created so if you are implementing the page object model in your automation framework so page class contains all the page elements of that page and also it contains the page method methods which performs the operations on the those particular elements so for example so i have opened a google.com i want to search with the keywords so those kind of methods or the actions can be implemented in the same page let's say we have created created a home page so within that we should be able to identify the web page elements and also we should be able to implement the methods which performs the search of the keywords so at high level this is what all about the page object model so let's see what are the advantages of using the page object model so code will be cleaner and also it is easier to understand because we will be having a separate pages and also we will be having the separate automation test so our in our automation test we will be calling to the our page object model all the methods wherever it is required and object repository is independent of test scripts so obviously because object repository is nothing but the page object page what we have created for example home page result page so like this so these are independent of the automation test test right the next advantage is test script will be optimized because of the elements respective abstraction methods are in the page classes so our test will be optimized because we have implemented the abstraction methods in the respective page object classes itself 
and coming to the disadvantages so time and effort so you need to give a more time and effort initially when you are working when you started working on the project and after spending some time so less effort less effort and time is required to implement the page object model and it is the this particular implementation is only specific to the particular project so you cannot use this particular page object model for the another project so that is the second disadvantage now let's look at the how exactly sample page object page looks like so firstly we have included the page sorry we have included a playwright model and after that we have created a simple class and that is the exportable class guys and within that class we have declared one constructor within the constructor so page object initialization is done and after that we can start adding like this n number of elements within the constructor itself and then you can start creating the all the abstractions methods say for example i want to search with the search keywords in the google so that method will be implemented in this particular page itself so you cannot implement in a different page so what are the actions you are performing in that particular page that methods or those kind of methods can be implemented in the same page class so this is how exactly looks looks like the sample page object page of the playwright now let's look at the sample page object test how exactly it looks like so firstly you need to include the play, uh, playwright model and after that so you need to import all the pages what you have created for example we have created home page result page playlist page so like this you need to import it and after that so you need to create the object of respective page object pages then you can start creating then you can start calling the methods which you have implemented inside the page object pages for example if i take the example of this home page so we have implemented one method called go to so if i go to the if i go to home page here you can see that go to method is implemented inside the home page and if i see the another method where we have called in the line number 14 search keywords so if you see here guys so we have implemented that particular method within the home page itself so this is how exactly looks like the sample page object test now let's start implementing the page object model in the playwright firstly let's see the manual scenario then we'll come back to the vs code and we'll start implementing the page object model in playwright so firstly we will navigate to the google.com so this is the home page for us we will be creating one home page js file and in the home page so we have to implement one method to search the keywords also so here i'm searching with playwright by test us stock and we have to press it enter from the keyboard and once we got the result page so we'll be creating another class called result page and then we will click on by by using the link text we will click on the playwright by tester stock so this is the second page that's the result page and this is the playlist page guys so we are going to create the total three pages one is home page result page and then third one is playlist page and once we are in the playlist page so simply we will click on the very first video in this playlist so this is a scenario guys what we are going to automate it by using the page object model in playwright so let's start creating the pages first so here i will navigate to the vs code and here i am creating a one folder called pages so inside the pages i am creating three js files first one is home page dot js that's it and i am creating the second js file as sorry result page dot js and i am creating the third javascript file as playlist page dot js so that's it guys so we are done with creating the pages now so firstly i will go to the home page dot js and here we have to include the very first playwright model so it will say include playwright module that's it so here i will use the require and inside the required so simply i will add the at the rate playwright playwright slash test then i'm assigning back to the constant variable object 
So here I'm adding inside the flower brackets. Here I'm adding it as the expect object. So that's it, guys. So we are exporting this particular playwright test in the current JavaScript class. JavaScript class. So by using this expect, so that we can assert the sum of the elements. That's it, guys. Now, so we have to create the class. Create class. So here I'm saying class followed by class name. So here I'm saying class name as home page. And simply I will open and close the flower brackets. So as I said, these classes are exportable. So that's the reason. So here I'll say exports dot home page. That's it, guys. Now we are done with creating the class. So inside this class, so firstly you need to write the constructor. So here I'm saying constructor and which is accepting the page as the parameter. So here I'll say page. That's it guys. So inside the constructor we have to initialize the page object. Then we have to store the all the elements. So here I'll say elements. So that's it guys. Now to use all the page page functions or page methods. So above the constructor you need to do you need to write it as one forward slash and two star. And that's it guys. So this is the JS doc comment. So you need to add it above the constructor to use all the functions from the page object. So here I'll say simply import. So let's remove all the stuff from here. Inside the brackets, so here I'm saying directly at the rate playwright slash test, and after that, here I'm saying dot page. That's it, guys. Now we are, we can use the all the page object methods inside the constructor or in the abstraction functions. Now let's initialize the page object to the current page variable. So here I'll say this dot page equal to page so that's it guys now we have done the page initialization and now we have to go to the this google.com we have to inspect the search text box search text box sorry and here here we have to search with the some keywords right so let's inspect the search text box and if you see here guys so it has lots of attributes and values. So here I'm using the ID of the this particular text box. So simply I'll press hash and the value. If you see here guys, so we are able to locate the search text box by using the ID. So I'll take this locator and here. So I'm using the this dot and here we have to specify the variable name as search text box. That's it. Then now we can use the page object to find the element. So here I'm saying locator and inside that I'm adding the locator value guys. That's it. It is very simple. So firstly we have created a constructor. Within this we have done the initialization of the page object. Then we have created the one simple locator. That is the text box locator. So that's it guys. We are done with creating the search text box locator now. So firstly, we will implement one simple method that goes to the our google.com. So simply I will take this URL and I'll come back to the VS code. And here I'm implementing the one async method. So here I'm saying the method name as go to. That's it guys. So here I'm using the await as is well. So this is the way of navigating to the URL. So I'm using the await followed by page this dot page dot go to. So inside this function we can add the URL. So that's it guys. So firstly we can call to this particular method so that we can navigate to the URL. So once we navigated into this URL, so we have to perform the search functionality in this Google home page. So let's implement a method that performs the search functionality. 
So here again, I'm implementing the async method called search keywords. And this particular method is accepting the one parameter. So we need to pass the search keyword to this particular method. Let's say in this, in our case, we are searching with the playwright by tester stock. So that keyword has to be passed on to the, this particular method whenever we are calling to the search keywords. Then, so firstly, I will check whether that element is enabled or not. Then we will click, click on that particular element. Then we will enter the sum data. So here I'm using the await followed by to check the enablement of that particular element. So we have to use the expect object inside this. So again, we have to use this dot. Sorry guys, so this dot. And so we want to check this text box is enabled or not, right? So let's take this element. And now here I'm saying to be enabled. If this element is enabled, simply click on that particular element. And after that, once we click on that element, sorry guys. So here let's remove the or expect object. So expect, I don't want to use it because we will be using ex expect only to assert something. So here I want to perform the click operation on this text box. And after that, I want to enter something. So simply I'll take the locator. And after that, I will say fill method. And inside this, we have to pass this particular parameter. So whatever we are passing it from the test, so we should be able to search with that keywords. And that's it guys. So after entering the search keywords, so we have to press the enter from the keyboard. So that's the reason I will use the locator and followed by that, I'm calling to the one method called press. So here I'm passing the value as enter. So that's it guys, we are done with implementing the home page. So let me summarize what we have done once again. So firstly, we have included the playwright model. Then we have created a class inside the class. So we have created a constructor which contains the initialization of the page object and also it contains the elements. And then we have implemented simple two abstraction methods. One is going to the URL and second one is which searches with the keyword. So that's it guys. Now let's copy this same skeleton of the class and I will go to the result page and I'll paste it here. And here I will give the class name as result page and I'll pass the same class name here as well. And that's it guys. So now once we are in the result page, so let's say here I want to search with playwright by tester stock. And here we have to identify the this particular playlist playwright by tester stock. So I want to identify this element by using the link text. So that's the reason I will go to the class. So let me delete all this stuff which is not required. So here I will say firstly I will add the element name as playlist link that's it and here so here I'm using the get by role as the locator value and inside this one so firstly here we have to say link and followed by that so we have to pass the object so name equal to some value so what is the text you want to pass it here so here we have to pass the text as playwright by testers talk so that's it. So we are identifying this particular playlist by using the link text, right? So here we have added the proper link text here. That's it guys. So we have identified the playlist, playlist link now. So I will take this playlist. Firstly, I will check whether it is enabled or not. So I will keep the as it is 20 line number. And then, so after that, so here we have to say, here I'm calling one method called first. So I want to focus on the first element. In the similar way, I'll take this element and then I want to simply click on that particular element guys. That's it. So we are done with implementing the click on playlist. So that's it guys. So we have renamed the function name as click on playlist. And I don't want to accept any parameter over here. 
So let me summarize what we have done in this result page. So simply we have copied the same home page and here we have updated the class name. And after that, here we have identified the playlist link by using the link text. And after that, I have written a simple function that will clicks on the playwright by test stock playlist. That's it guys. So let's copy the same skeleton and I will go to the playlist page. So let's update the firstly class name. So it will say playlist page and let me add the same over here as well. And that's it guys. So once we click on the click on the this particular playlist. So we have to identify the this particular first video. So here I'm identifying this particular element by using the CSS selector. I will inspect this element. And if you see here guys, so which contains the thumbnail, idea is a thumbnail and idea is a container. So if you look at the root tag and firstly, I will identify by using the ID of the ID value that is a container and followed by that, I will pass the ID value of the ID value as thumbnail. So simply I will copy this container, then I'll press control F, then I'll press hash value and followed by this arrow I'm giving and after that hash. So simply I'm passing the thumbnail here. So that's it guys. If you see here guys, so this particular element is, so if you look at this selector and it is highlighting the very first video in this playlist. So I will take this particular CSS selector and I will go to the playlist page dot js file. And here I will rename the element name as video link. And if you see here guys in this web page, so this element is matching with the 20 elements but I will focus on the very first element by using the first method and I will perform the click operation on this particular video. And so here I'll say locator and here we have to specify the locator value. So simply I'll pass the locator value. So that's it guys. Now let's implement the or abstraction method as click on video. And here I will use the video link element then I will identify the first element and after that simply I will perform the click operation guys so that's it so very simple changes three changes we have done so firstly we have updated the class name then we have added the video link in the play playlist page and after that we have implemented one simple method that will performs the click operation on the video guys that's it it's very simple guys so we are done with implementing the all the pages. Now let's quickly create the one spec file. So here I'll say page object test dot spec dot js. So that's it guys. So here I will go to the one of the test and simply I will copy the skeleton of the playwright test. So I'll paste it. So I will delete all the stuffs which are not required. So that's it guys. So here I will update the test name as page object model in playwright. So that's it guys. So let me list down what list down all the steps what we are doing here. Firstly, we will go to the URL and after that we will search with. So it will say search with keywords. And once we search with the keywords, we have to click on the playlist and after that so we need to click on the video as well in the inside the playlist so it will say click on video so that's it guys so steps are very simple now we need to start importing the all the pages inside this spec file so here i'll say require and inside the require so we have to specify the path of the all the pages here guys. So here I'll say two dots and followed by that we have the pages folder and inside the pages we have the home page and I will assign back to the 
constant object. So it will say constant. So here I will type the home page. So like this, I will import the rest of the two pages, guys. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it two times. So let's import the result page here. And then let's add the object name as result page. And let's import the playlist page as well. And let's assign back to the playlist object. So that's it guys. So we are done with importing all the pages what we have created so far. Now, firstly, we have to navigate to the URL, right? So this navigation method is implemented inside the home page. If you look at this one, so in the line number 19, we have, we have implemented a method called go to and inside that we are navigating to the URL. To use this particular method, so I need to create the object of this particular class. So let's create the object of this particular class. So here I'll say new followed by home page. So this home page constructor is accepting the page as the parameter. Simply pass the page as a parameter. Then we can assign back to the one constant variable. Then here we can say home page as the variable name. That's it guys. So firstly, we have to navigate to the URL. I will use the home page object by using that. I'm calling to the one method called go to. So that's it. But before that, we need to add the one keyword called await. So this is a very common keyword you'll be using while writing the playwright test. So that's it guys. Now let's try to run and see whether it is working properly or not. Then we'll start implementing the rest of the steps. So it has to navigate to the URL and that's the simple test. So we'll make sure that this test is working perfectly fine. And if you see here guys, it is launching the browser and we are able to navigate to the URL and our test is getting passed, right? Now let's implement, let's implement the rest of the steps now. So we need to start searching with the keywords, right? Sorry guys. And here I will use the home page object and followed by I'm calling to the method called search keywords. So this method is accepting the one parameter guys. If you see the home page, so this method is accepting the one parameter as a search keyword, right? So let's pass the keyword as playwright by tester stop. That's it. And after that, so we need to click on the playlist. So this click operation we have impl implemented inside the our result page. If you see here, so click on playlist we have implemented inside the result page. To call this particular method, so we have to create the result page object. So that's the reason. So here I'm creating the result page object. So it will say new and followed by that result page. And also we have to pass the page as the parameter and we can assign back to the variable. So it will say result page. So by using the result page, I can click on the playlist, right? So it will say click on playlist. So once we click on the playlist, now, so it goes to the playlist page, right? So in this playlist page, so we are clicking on the playlist video, right? To call to this particular method, so again, I have to create the another object of the playlist page. So let's start creating the object of the playlist page. And also we, we need to pass the page as the parameter. Then let's assign back to the variable called playlist page. And that's it guys. By using this object, so I will call to the method called click on video. So that's it guys. It's very simple now, right? So after completing all this execution flow, I am writing one await followed by page. So here I want to wait for the timeout. So we can see the execution properly guys. So that, that, that's the reason I'm writing the some wait over here. So our test is ready. So firstly, we are navigating to the URL and then we are searching in the Google search page. Then we are clicking on the playlist. Then finally, we are performing the click operation on the playlist video guys. So that's it. It's very simple test what we have implemented so far. 
So let's run the test now. So it has navigated and it has searched with the keywords and also it has clicked on the playlist. And here we should be able to click on the video. See guys, so our test got failed. So let me check what is the issue here. So it is saying it is uh, disabled actually. So let me check once again. So I will put some weight over here. So that should be fine. So here I'll put some weight as 2000. So let's run the test now. So if it is not working, we will just uh, remove the assertion for the en enablement of the element. So if you see here guys, so our test is perfectly working fine. So we can put the more weight over there and we can check it. So YouTube is a heavy loaded application. So that's the reason you need to use the sometimes so manual page in the automation test. So it is started searching with the keywords and it is it has clicked on the playlist and it has to click on the first video in the playlist. That's it guys. So we are able to perform the action for actions properly. So that's it guys. So, so this is all I am having in this session. So this is how you can implement the page object model in Playwright. In the previous Playwright tutorial, we have discussed how to implement page object model in Playwright. In this Playwright tutorial, we are going to see how to do video recording of the automation test execution. And also we are going to see how to attach the video recording of test execution into the Playwright test report. So here I will go to the VS code. And so I will try to run the one of the spec file. So that is actually getting failed. And we will check the report. So we, we are not finding the any video attached into the Playwright test report. And after enabling the video recording for the test execution, then we should be able to find the video added into the test report. So our test will get failed guys. So this is the expected behavior. So let's ignore this and I will open the Playwright test report. And that's it guys. So if you see the report, so we are finding the error information, test steps and screenshot. And at the end, we are finding the traces. So we need to enable one configuration by using that we can capture the video recording of the automation test execution and also we can attach into the report based on the demand. So we can pass the multiple configuration value. So we can pass whether you want to whether you want to capture the whether you want to record a, a video during the first retry failure or on just a failure. So like that configuration data we have to pass it in the playwright configuration file guys. So I will close the repo report now. We'll come back to this report after enabling the configuration in the Playwright config file. So firstly, I will enable the configurations and again, we will re-execute the failed test.spec file. So here I'm opening the playwright.config.js file and here under the defined configuration and you'll be finding the another JSON object as use inside this you need to add the one configuration. So here you need to say video colon and here you need to pass the two configurations. One is mode. So for this mode, so we can pass the different values. So here, so based on the need or the demand, you can pass the value. So in my case, I want to record the test execution retain on failure. Say for example, if you have enabled retry mechanism, you can uh, select the third option. So in my case, just for the demo purpose, I will select the retain on failure so that it is going to capture the, it is going to record the test execution when 
our test is getting failed and also it will add into the playwright test report and here we have to pass the another parameter so that is the size of the video so firstly you need to pass the width so normal width is it's of 640 so you can give the different value also that will also work out and here you need to specify the height so what is the height of the video so in my case i will specify the 480 so that's it guys this is what the simple configuration you need to enable in the playwright configuration file so once the configuration is done so let's go to the our spec file now so that is the failed test dot spec dot js file so let's execute the same spec file and we will see whether playwright is recording the video of the test execution or not and also we will see whether it is attaching the video recording into the playwright test report or not so that's it guys so our test will get failed so this is the expected failure so let's open the report once again and this time we should be able to find the video recording of the automation test execution and if you see here guys so here you can see that so this is a traces and this is the video added into the this particular test execution firstly we will see the errors se error section and after that test steps and after that you will be finding the screenshots and then traces and if you see here guys so it has recorded the video of the test execution and also it has added into the report also right guys so if i go down so you can see you can play the test execution video as well guys here only you can see like what is happened so firstly it has opened the youtube.com and then it will start searching with the keywords and it goes to the playwright And that's it guys so this is the 30 second video so this is how you can enable the video recording of the automation test execution when your test cases are getting failed so you can pass the particular configuration value as retain on failure right so let's say for example I'm not bothered about the failures I want the test test execution recording all the time so in that case you can simply pass the on here say for example so I will go to the one of the spec file where it is getting passed but still we will see the video is added into the playwright test report so here I will open one of the spec file as page object test dot spec file so I will run this spec file so it is a very simple test it goes to the google.com and it will search us with the keywords then it goes to the one of the playlist so it is getting failed guys so what i will do is simply i will put little bit of weight over there so here i'll go to the spec file and here i'll put a little bit of weight there as a four seconds and I will rerun the test so you can take any spec file which is perfectly working fine and you can simply run the test and uh, we will see you can observe in the playwright test report whether uh, playwright is adding the video recording or not so this time our test should work perfectly fine and if you see here guys our test is getting passed right now let's go to the report now So we have already opened the report so let me refresh this report and if you see here guys we have executed the page object test.spec.js file and here only you can see that video has added into this particular test execution 
and if you if i come down here so here you will be finding the video section right so based on your need guys you can enable the configurations in the playwright config.json sorry js file so this is the complete execution of the test case right guys so that's it guys so this is how you can do the video recording of the automation test execution in the playwright in the previous playwright tutorial i have discussed about how to do video recording of the test case execution in this playwright tutorial we are going to see how to maximize browser in playwright or how to make the full screen browser in playwright so here i will go to the vs code and i will open the one of the spec file and if i run this test guys so our browser is not maximized and also you can see that it is not a full screen browser right if you look at the browser so we will see how to maximize the browser in playwright or we will see how to make the full screen browser in playwright so that's it guys so there are two ways so you can go to the playwright.config.js file and here you can make the configuration change so this is the one way and the second way is you can go to the function where exactly you are launching the browser or entering the url and there you need to just set the view port size so that's it guys so here i'm just using one statement as await so before we navigate into the url i'm writing a one simple statement over here guys that's it so here i'm writing await followed by that so i'm using the page object by using this one here i'm saying set view port size and inside this we have to pass the object so first one we have to pass the width and if you see here guys so it is accepting two parameters one is width and the height so we can pass the custom size of the browser guys so here i will go to the one of the my browser and i will open the console and simply here you, you can type the outer width and that gives you the outer width of the browser and in the similar way you can get the outer height as well so these two numbers we have to pass over to the set viewport of the size method so width is 1366 so let's pass the width as 1366 so we can pass the custom size of the browser guys so that's the window size of the browser so let's pass the firstly width here i'll say 1366 and in the similar way we can pass the height as well so we can pass the height as 728 so i will pass the height as 728 so that's it guys so i saved the this particular function now i will rerun the spec file so this time if you see here guys so our our browser got maximized and also you can see the full screen browser so this is how you can enable the full screen browser using playwright our test is executing in the full screen browser and also you can see the result here so our test is getting passed right and here you can see the check mark also so this is how you can maximize the browser in playwright